you for keeping us company again. This is why in the morning, my name is Adereva Hilawi. Time for politics. Now we have seen our politician floating the guidelines by the given by the Ministry of Health and indeed the World Health Organization. Why is this so? Then we have this faction that is allowed to hold meetings. Then there is another that is not allowed. If they do, uh, the, poli the police will be there to tear gas them and disperse them. Why do we have this uh, dispensation of the uh, laws of Kenya? If we don't have the meeting, then it should be for everyone, not the individuals. But then we have to put things into perspective. Helping me to do that is Beatrice Cairo, health uh, economist and an analyst. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well. Mm -hmm. Umekuaji? Umekuapua sana. Mm -hmm. Been enjoying myself uh, during this uh, COVID time is a time of reflection. Mm. Now, how did you come away with a feel, feel, and a feel uh -huh. about this COVID-19? Mm -hmm. If the father of the house says something, yes. The, 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 the family members or that family will have to obey. Yes. They will have to. Yes. But of course, even the father, mm -hmm. put in the, uh, aki put a masharti mm -hmm. in a way and a far peer to Yes. We have our leaders, yes. elected leaders. Yes. But what has been given by their colleague, mm -hmm. they are not living by that. Mm -hmm. We have seen even our, sen our own senator, Nairobi senator, yes. being arrested for violating the guidelines. Yes. And yes. I wonder whether that was essential. Mm. We've also seen meetings being held, political yeah. meetings mm -hmm. being held. Yes. They are not observing social distancing mm -hmm. in the name of mm -hmm. speaking to our community. Mm -hmm. A good example is what was happening in Western. Actually, the Western region has been uh, highlighting all these political meetings. Mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. do you make of them? I think um, we are a nation again, and this has always been my my stand. We are a nation that we don't have a value system. We we have we don't have ingrained values within us mm -hmm. that govern us. So right now we are seeing spikes in the number of COVID cases. Mm -hmm. And Mutahi uh, Kagwe, the CS, uh, comes out and tells people, uh, take precautions, social distance. Uh, that's a song they are singing. But now the same, same uh, leaders are the same ones now violating and they expect Mm -hmm. uh, the citizens to also follow suit. So it's not possible because a leader always comes from the society. And a leader is a reflection of what the kind of society you, you have. If, if majority of the, of, the, uh, of, of the people within the societies mm -hmm. are um, people who don't follow rules, people who don't, uh, who, who don't uh, adhere to whatever guidelines that have been given, chances are even the leaders that we are having are going to be of the same uh, kind of caliber. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it is interesting that uh, in this country we have whereby laws, when, they have be, uh, when, when laws are put, they only apply to some people and not apply to others. Mm -hmm. So, for the normal wananchi, utapigwa rungu, nakarao, mpaka, to death because you don't have a mask mm -hmm. but our leaders they will meet there will be no social distance and they will not be taken anywhere a normal mwananchi akishikwa sahi kama hakuna social distance ama hajafanya uh, hajava mask ama haja put in the guidelines they will be fined heavily but someone like our senator was caught violating the rules curfew past curfew nini atashikwa and nothing will happen. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. So what kind of, uh, why can't we have leadership by example? Lead by example. Even Jesus led by example. Eh? Even Paul told uh, his disciples, follow me as I follow Christ. Mm -hmm. as, you know, as I do it, do, do also. Mm -hmm. But now our leaders are telling, you don't follow, uh, you follow me, but don't do as I do. You do as I say. You, mm -hmm. That's the kind of leadership you have. Do as I say, not do as I do. Mm -hmm. But most of the chances are when you're a leader, people will do as you do. Not do, They will not do as you say, True. Unfortun unfortunately. So I think that is, I think, carelessness uh, in, in terms of our leaders. And the, the, the worst of it is that this whole COVID, if per se, based on... Uh, 
on the uh, the data that is uh, being aired out that actually we are losing lives and these lives uh, like the other day we saw a medical doctor succumbed uh, to death previously there was a nurse the week before that though it was not so much highlighted i don't know why because i think all healthcare workers matter mm -hmm. so previously there was a nurse who also passed away uh, now we've seen a comedian in the media industry mm -hmm. and if uh, just like motahi kagwe had said to ki behave abnormally he disease it 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 to it to it to it to treat abnormally mm -hmm. so if we cannot see that over time if the government uh, officials uh, our leaders do not take precaution what will happen is mm -hmm. then everybody will just follow suit people is start going to burn now apparently their uh, their previous clubs mm -hmm. are now being opened um, unfortunately, uh, they are now open. They are just operating as normal up to even 3 a.m. in the night. Some of you here, they belong to them. Exactly. So now it reaches to a point. Uh, then what are these measures and guidelines? Are you are you trying to give out mm -hmm. if at all nobody is adhering to it? And uh, is it that maybe because now it also heightens uh, the issue of people questioning whether is now COVID for real? Because if our leaders are behaving in such a way, could they could they be using COVID as a way of controlling us? Mm -hmm. Are you seeing? So if COVID is being used as a way to control us then people will start now thinking that covid is not real so as much as the medical experts would be shouting covid is real but they're like how can you say covid is real and yet the same lawmakers are the ones breaking the law now speaking of uh, violating the rules yes. and actually the one for the social distancing yes don't do you think it has been politicized in the sense mm -hmm. of there are people who are allowed to have meetings mm -hmm political meetings mm -hmm. and then there are those who are not uh, allowed to have meetings mm -hmm. and if they dare do so mm -hmm. the police will be with them i once made a comment and said it seems now covid19 has ceased from being a medical issue to now a political issue and we can see it all over the world not only in kenya we mm -hmm. look in even in america now it's more of a political it's now being used for political gain mm -hmm. so it's it's now going to be used as a campaign tool against donald trump uh so it has also been used to also fight tanzania for example uh, the who the un they're all trying to fight tanzania because they're saying they're not reporting any cases uh, at the same time they're saying uh, magufuri is uh, going on with an iron fist so now now when you look at now COVID, it has shifted from being a medical issue. You know, it's not like the HIV AIDS was initially, although to some other um, expert and other investigators, they feel HIV AIDS at some point was being used as a political tool uh, to control the masses. But now when you look at now how COVID has approached, now it has become politicized rather than using uh, expertise or professionalism in dealing with it mm -hmm. so now people i shall say uh, every leader uses uh, chaos to their every crisis you can always use every crisis to your advantage mm -hmm. so now we are seeing uh, this crisis of covid is being used as a tool to to tame uh, political larries of, of your opponents and if you're the one uh, in governance you use it to your favor mm -hmm. so that you can disarm your opponent and how do you do by it so when your opponent tries to hold rallies they will they they will be held accountable the police will be there we saw how boni kalware uh, meetings were disrupted mm -hmm. but if you are pro government like akino paranya what will happen is uh, people are not even being uh, taken to court or, or, or being or, or being uh, or the police being involved mm -hmm. so that tells you already what does uh, that protest a picture to the public if our leaders are not taking this COVID seriously, then why should we also take it seriously? Mm -hmm. So even the spiking of the cases, don't blame the common one inchi because monkey see, monkey do. Mm -hmm. So if, if you guys are meeting for meetings, even me, I'll meet, have my own bash, my ba own birthday party, yeah, to convene my own members, right? Mm -hmm. I'll have my own bridal shower. I saw another comedian, they held a bridal shower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Natunambio, we social distance, they held a bridal shower. So now when you 
think about it. Mm -hmm. But they will just copy what uh, the, the politicians are doing. So now COVID-19 now is becoming now more of a political issue than a medical issue, mm -hmm. than even a scientific, uh, scientific issue because now the politicians are the one now uh, uh, on the going going ahead of us, and that's why I keep on insisting. Mm -hmm. There's so much intellectual dishonesty that is going around this whole COVID thing, mm -hmm. and as we play around with 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 we are like playing around with the lives of people. We are playing around with the livelihoods of people because right now uh, we are still having that rooming of a, of of an economic crisis that is keep on uh, it's keep on threatening us, threatening our economy. But it seems we are not so much. Uh, 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 so much into into how this COVID thing is affecting people. It's affecting people mentally. Mm -hmm. It's affecting people financially. It's it's affecting people even even physically. So and then remember, even now, uh, high school students and, uh, and even primary school students and other school going uh, children mm -hmm. have lost a whole year, uh, which in their whole lifetime they may never recover it. So oh. it's it's it, it's it's something that has been indented in. Them for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we have careless leaders who don't think about the masses. They don't think about the people they are leading. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry to say, by foreseeing the near future, we'll have very several politicians, several leaders actually contracting that disease themselves so that they can also feel the pinch, uh, the, the common citizen are experiencing. Because we, we, the, the thing about this whole COVID, mm -hmm. Haibagui. It will attack anybody, whether you are rich, whether you are poor, whether you are old, whether you are young, whether you 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 have a medical degree or you 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 don't have any medical degree. The, the only funny thing is that I've not seen chokoras. I'm still mm. seeing them rooming around. It seems God is really protecting them. The but immune system. They are, or maybe the immune system. Maybe it's a, an investigation people should do. But the leaders should know that as much as they are taking it so casually and using it as a tool. I should say sometimes healthcare is used as a political tool to manipulate the masses. But for how long? Mm -hmm. Because the same masses you want to, to manipulate. Even you, you are a human being with, with, with blood flowing through you. No one is immune to death. Yeah, I usually say nobody is immune to death. We are all susceptible to death. Mm -hmm. So you cannot c go around and play around with people's health thinking you are immune to death. It could be you. Nobody would have thought... Um, uh, some of these uh, celebrities would succumb to death, but we are seeing many of them succumbing to it. So nobody is immune to death. So you cannot go around joking and thinking uh, you are above, you are immortal. Nobody is immortal. So I think the way our leaders are carrying themselves, they think because they have money, because they have uh, access to better healthcare facilities, uh, they feel that they are immune to this whole situation, but they forget okay. uh, life and death does not belong to them. Life and death belongs to the maker, mm -hmm. and uh, they should stop playing around with with people's lives. And mm -hmm. I think I wish they 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 were intelligent enough to take advantage of this whole COVID, and because now they have been exposed, that they. Uh, actually, what we have been building as a country for the last 56 years mm -hmm. is now being exposed in the open. We've realized we have a poor education system. Right. We've realized we have a poor healthcare system. We've realized we cannot even cushion our own people when it comes to financial losses. We've realized even our old people, we don't even have a system of protecting our, our own old people. We've realized we don't have manufacturing uh, industries that can help. And by now, I was expecting uh, them promoting individuals like now they, they came up with the ventilator thing. They would be promoting individuals mm -hmm. who are coming up with a material that can make better masks. Imagine uh, a country like Taiwan that is uh, close proximity to China. Uh, right now they are COVID free. You find that they only had around 486 cases. And what did the government do? It started making masks, the correct mask. What is a cloth mask that people are wearing around and moving <laughs> around? And we are thinking that people are safe because the only thing that it's been... Uh, prevented is the um, uh, maybe the cough droplets and whatever but in Taiwan the government distributed masks to every citizen to every single the correct mask the three ply masks and to the ones who are more at risk the N95 mask were being distributed to the point they even did an, they, they did not do a lockdown people are still going on with their businesses people are still um, 
uh, carrying on with the economic activity, wearing the mask because the, it was free. So now we have a government, you are given funding by the World Bank, you are given funding by the IMF, you are given funding by the WHO, but imagine at, at no single point did they even ever distribute masks mm -hmm. to individuals, the correct masks. So how do you expect, us, uh, expect the curve to flatten? It can't because already where you could have genuinely come in as a government and said you love your people and distribute masks to each and every individual. Mm -hmm. But now people had to go out of their way to be innovative. Wanararua nguwa mahali wanashona so as to have masks. So yeah. by now we should have seen uh, people coming up with scientific ways of inventing the material for making masks and we make locally. Even the two small loops for putting Komaski, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't even manufacture that. But, that. but now I was expecting, the because for over 56 years we've been having graduates who have done a lot of technology and production and engineering. Mm -hmm. this, this was the high time that we could have brought these individuals together and said, can we create this material? Do we, where do we get these chemicals? Can we create our own, right? Mm -hmm. By now, we should be thinking of how can we be inventing our healthcare system for the future. Now, we have governors and high-profile people putting ICU beds in their own homes. So what about that Wanjiko who cannot afford even a meal, be able to put an ICU bed in their own uh, institution in their own uh, in their own uh, compound. Speaking right? of the meal, mm. uh, the CS Motaika is on record saying, mm -hmm. telling pub, uh, the members of the public, yeah. if these politicians call you, mm. do not go, do not be foolish enough to mm -hmm. go. And actually, there's a point he said, you mm. are a foolish to go, mm. of which it's okay. But now tell me, this person has no food at home, and then you hear your Mueshimiwa is somewhere giving out food, mm -hmm. don't you go? Whether there's COVID or not, mm -hmm. they, will, they will always go. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think now this COVID-19, like you were saying pol uh, politically, yeah. uh, the manipulation, yes. do you think now they will use uh, the, the dishing out of food and the mask to the yes. populace now to come just to listen to them, mm -hmm. but of course exposing them to COVID-19? You, you see, I usually say politicians are opportunistic uh, kind of individuals, mm -hmm. uh, sorry to say. Uh, rarely do we have uh, politicians who are genuinely leaders. So for them, because uh, you see, we see from March from the lockdown, it was like five or so, uh, or so months. And sometimes they, they felt, uh, mm -hmm. uh, my competitors, they're also looking at 2022. You, you know, they have sort of like a narcissistic kind of uh, personality, I would say, quote unquote, because why can't you, if you're an MP of a certain area, you know the MCAs of that, why not call the MCAs? Why not involve the chiefs? Must you stand somewhere and declare that you are the one who has contributed? For what gain? Even Jesus said, if you are doing good, don't let the right hand know what your left hand is doing. Mm -hmm. But because it is for selfish gain, not for really for helping individuals, so that they can show on social media they have been helping individuals, so that they can show that they are doing something. But it's, but, but this is your right as a citizen to for your government to provide these basic necessities. Mm -hmm. So why should we be at the masses of individuals to, for us to access basic necessities, right? Mm -hmm. And so if they were genuinely working for the people, they don't have to call people and to scramble, right? And then they are the same ones saying social distancing. They are the same ones, uh, even I'm disappointed with Motahi Kagwe. Why can't he you, uh, put, uh, what is it called, put uh, policies that, that, that can govern and ensure that beyond a reasonable doubt that these, that, that these individuals should be prohibited, right? Because he is a CS. A CS uh, he means he's part of the executive. There is the police and the army. Why not uh, stop these senators and these politicians from doing that? Do we have a government that does not have a tooth that it cannot be able to 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 stop a lawmaker? Because now what is happening? They'll be it seems their own. <laughs> Yeah, because now what is happening? It seems like the MPs, the senators, they are above the law. 
But yeah, you remember, yet we have a constitution. Yeah. Around, 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 around March and April, yes. the public were furious of their leaders. They were saying, we are not seeing our leaders. Where are they? Mm -hmm. Now, do you think they're now trying to respond? Mm -hmm. We are here. We've been here only mm -hmm. that we needed maybe to strategize things. And that's mm -hmm. why we are calling you for the meetings. But do, do you have to appear so that people can feel your leadership? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Because if you have set systems in place, you don't need to appear. Because things would just be flowing, right? Mm -hmm. But because we have leaders who are, um, again, I would say, they, they like feeding from the energy of people and they have to appear so that, uh, so that they can feel as if um, they are working. You know, in Kenya, we have this, 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 this value whereby mm -hmm. even when you are working in a place, you, so long as you have appeared, it's assumed you have worked. But that's, that's not true. Mm -hmm. I may keep on appearing every time, but I'm doing literally nothing. I'm just appearing. Nila Akitambo, you, you come and hang your coat just to show that your presence is there. But in, in actual essence, you have mm -hmm. not actually even worked even a single hour in that, in, in that office. We, this is something we have seen in government offices. People just come, hang their coats, mm -hmm. uh, and they go on, carry on their daily things. But a whole eight hours, and they'll still pocket in a salary. They have done nothing to the service of individuals. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to appear for there to be effects that you're actually doing something in, 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 that, in, in that society. So why could they, they call in MCS because they were called Call the chiefs, right? The chiefs knows each and every individual in that village, right? If it's Unga na na mafuta kupika and what na Unga angano, why not package in in? And you don't have to declare that writing your name in bold. It's 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 very <laughs> very funny, yeah. So you just go and tell them, no, uh, the MP of this area has decided to give you this kind of food and it's distributed per home. This is a time even we should have involved now technology. Rwanda right now is using robots, right? Mm -hmm. Even to test, uh, to test uh, the, the people who are sus suspected uh, to be COVID-19. Uh, Rwanda has also using drones in terms of delivery of vaccines and delivery of blood and delivery of other medical products. Now, why couldn't we use our own technology? And I'm sure we have engineers in this country, mm -hmm. right? We could have produced or manufactured uh, the food distributing gadgets. Yeah, you just... We have a database. Why did we even do the census? You know, uh, sometimes we don't leverage on uh, on the things that we, we we have, and we don't have to import these things. We can just use it uh, locally. It's all. It just shows uh, the cognitive thinking of our leaders is very low. Mm -hmm. It's literally very low because this is something they would have solved, right? And uh, by just using the structure already set in place, and all these people they know one another. Is in Yumbakumi. Very good. We, we I should say we have very good policies written on paper. Very nice, beautifully. Yeah. But, in, implementation. By Vizuri. but implementation is the problem, and you don't need rocket science to implement some of these uh, few things. The other thing would have been uh, since they were saying they were giving two thousand five hundred to each and every family. Then instead of distributing the food, pay to. Pesa, I love when they are no because say at least bars me fungwa, so they won't go drink the money, but at least they can actually go and buy. But because uh, people have this tendency in Lazima ni onekane, ni onijue ni kona impact, ni oniskike. But uh, sometimes uh, a legacy should outlive you. Mm -hmm. Because even if Wangari Madhai is not with us, for example, but we still have her legacy about environment and, and keeping the environment clean mm -hmm. and protecting the environment, right? But does she, has to, does, does she have to appear so that now we can protect the environment. I don't think so because her legacy was being felt wherever it is. Now, yeah. th this behavior by our politicians yeah. uh, trying to take advantage of the situation, yes. uh, violating the guidelines by the uh, Ministry of Health and yes. WHO. Yeah. Now, what kind of message are they setting or are they sending to mm. the youth who wants to be uh, leaders in mm -hmm. this country? Mm -hmm. What kind of message they are sending to our young people? They are just sending a message of uh, impunity pays, mm -hmm. right? So even people aspiring to become leaders, they are aspiring to become leaders so they can have that power of impunity. 
Why am I saying that? Case in point, we, uh, we saw one politician walk in a club, shoot someone, and they walk free. Right? What does that tell you? Everybody now would want to aspire to be a politician, to gain that power, mm -hmm. so that they can be careless and break the law, and they be above the law, and, and, and nobody would, um, would, would, would actually uh, ask them, because they, they, you, you seem like you're bigger than life. Exactly, bigger than life. Instead of them showing the youth, when you become a leader, show servanthood. You know, because leadership is servanthood. They don't want to show leadership as servanthood. So it even becomes a way of escaping poverty and a way of uh, coming to control people. But in ideal sense of leadership, it's, uh, it's about serving the people mm -hmm. so that the community or the nation can move in a certain direction. But now even when you ask most of our leaders, you being a member of parliament of this constituency, where do you see this constituency 10 years to come? Mm -hmm. Majority, they will not tell you, or they'll just blab blab some things of their manifesto. But in ideal sense, they cannot move from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. If you ask an MC, what, what is your expectation of these people in this, in this world? Where do you expect them in the next five years? Majority of them do not have vision. They're all visionless. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. To the extent, even to the highest level, where do you see Kenyans go in the next five years? They'll just tell you, oh, the big four agenda. Yeah, but where? Where are we? Are we moving from Karatina to Moranga or are we moving from Moranga to Nairobi? Mm -hmm. Because that's what a leader should actually uh, project. Actually, they should be reflecting. Come on, any MP of your constituency. Mm -hmm. With this whole COVID thing, if your dispensaries are not functioning, this is the high time to think maybe there need to be a lab within your constituency that can actually help, this, uh, help your constituents. Mm -hmm. But they can't sit down to think such things. All they think is temporary things. Viraka too, you know, just <laughs> viraka. I always call it viraka, you know, patching up, right? Yeah, right, right. So what will happen is that... Um, it creates another aura uh, whereby you want to become a leader or a politician so that you can have control, so that you can have wealth, so that people can fear you, so that you can look above the law. You know, just going with that uh, sense of power. But instead of uh, having the, the ability to show people when you become a leader, it's more of servantship. And people to applaud you and say, wow, I would like to be a leader to serve my people. But now most people want to become a leader. Do Julikan and you, you are above everybody else, and and you are amassing a lot of power, which I think is the wrong thing uh, to to, uh, to 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 try and become a leader. And that is what is ailing Africans. Mm -hmm. That is what is ailing our continent. Because when you look at most developed countries, if you look at the forefathers of, of those nations, they had that southern shoot. They were like, we project that there will be better roads in this place. We project that we, our children will have schools. We project that our children will have inheritance. And that's why you'll find them. They'll come to Africa, take our gold, take our diamonds, take our silver. Why? To have an inheritance for their children. Mm -hmm. We Africans, what, have, what, have they, what inheritance have they left us? It's more poverty and more poverty and more poverty. In, in real sense, right? Right. But when you look at the developed nations, you find that even the poorest of them all is able to be even be given $200 in a week. They're able to have shelters. That if you are a child born in that society, you can go to, the, to, to a school or the way to university without even making any payment. Mm -hmm. you, you, you get, but, but because there's already an inheritance that the forefathers of that nation were projecting for that country. We uh, would now bring it here in Africa. But for me... My generations to come they'll have nothing left left for them nothing mm -hmm. you would build schools that will enable uh, the children then even if you don't give me money I can access information mm -hmm. You won't build uh, infrastructure so that at least with these roads I can be able to 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 to, to transport my product you won't bring in internet and electricity at least I can create my own innovation. From, from from scratch mm -hmm. so that I can try and uplift the community. 
So what ends up being people end up looking so hopeless, and yet we have knowledge and information right. uh, as individuals. I believe uh, Africa, we have one of the brightest minds ever. True. I want us to shift gears now. Yeah. Uh, talk of, of uh, now the the political alignments. Mm -hmm. We have seen uh, the ANC say that now we are disassociating from the uh, <laughs> DP, the Tanga Tanga uh, yeah. team. Now, at this point, now mm -hmm. that it was believed that yeah. the DP has made inroads in the Western yeah. region, mm -hmm. do you think the disassociation of the ANC from uh, Tanga Tanga, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, has 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 made any impact from the Western region? Uh, uh, I would say yes and no. Reason being, um, right now, I, and I had earlier on stated, is um, the Luya nation is trying to be wooed. Everybody wants to woo the Luya nation. It's like uh, everybody now is focusing uh, on the Luya nation because any anyway, the Luya nation in itself it 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 has numbers. Right. Uh, but the unfortunate thing about the Luya nation, uh, sorry to say, uh, as much as we are not supposed to go tribal, but uh, that's how our country is. Uh, the Luya nation in itself it's already subdivided amongst itself. And mm -hmm. uh, what you can notice is now there is Musaliam Davadi, there is now Wetangula here. There's Oparanya trying to to area, then there's Atwoli. You 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 can see already there are already so many subdivision because they are afraid if one of the 2022 projected candidates is able to consolidate the whole Luya vote mm -hmm. as one, then there will be trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there will be trouble. And you see now, like for the DP, uh, as much as people are saying, oh, the Kikuyu vote, nini, nini, but he's also laying his own ground. He doesn't even need the whole 100% mm -hmm. uh, Kikuyu votes. He can even just split, just have a half of it. Mm -hmm. uh, because even we look at in 2020, in, in 2002, mm -hmm. when uh, Uhuru was vying for presidency, uh, the Kikuyu vote did not vote as 100%. Uh, a portion of it voted for Uhuru, a portion of it voted for Kibaki. So I think w William Samway Ruto was also playing uh, the same trick. I don't need 100%. You know, people are expecting that uh, they need, they need, he needs 100% Kikuyu vote. No, he only needs a portion of it. And then if he gets the whole Kalejin vote block, that's it. Then if you get the Luya Nation vote as a block, you're good to go. The rest, it, it, it doesn't really much matter. But then on the other end, uh, uh, Hillary, uh, they have to deter from that. They have to stop on that. And then you see now, right now, Musalim Davidi feels uh, he has a greater chance, he has a greater opportunity, as I had said earlier, because sometimes people think he's more of a safer, uh, uh, what, a safer bet in terms of uh, neutralizing uh, the temperatures in this country. Yeah? He looks a bit uh, neutral because the other, the other two uh, types of candidates, there'll be a lot of uh, uh, heated tension. So Musali is also trying to buy his cards. You know, he's also trying, you know, it's like those, that g girl who tries uh, to yeah, weigh her options. Yeah? The, so wanajaribu ku, 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 ku weigh options. But the, the game being being played here is to ensure that the Luya's, uh, the Luya nation does not go as one block. So they have to ensure it's as divided as much as possible. Because the moment the Luya nation will go as one vote, one one block, that already tells you the the eh, couple kuna kuna force to reckon because remember right now they are trying to split uh, majority are trying to split away from Raila Odinga uh, and now they want to go as a Luya nation now they are crying out sisi kama wa Luya tumeacho nyuma sana nini nini uh, we never get uh, an opportunity so and and, uh, and and when you look at the Luya nation itself hakuna there's not that one king one major kingpin standing up and saying we are all running behind because you see like now the Kalenjin as much as Gideon Boy is trying here and there but he didn't have that uh, kingship aspect like William Samuel Ruto so you see now most of the Kalenjins they are like they can all rally up uh, b b behind uh, behind uh, William. Uh, then now already now in the Kikuyu Nation, which uh, people have always Actually, been. We had a meeting yesterday, uh, of which it was a secret. Uh -huh. uh, but a few uh, 
CSEs were there uh -huh. and the MPs. Yes. It was held in Nembo. Yes. And the story was uh -huh. the uh, planning. And the other, just, and I think it's a week earlier, they yeah. had another meeting here yeah. in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. I think the, the Mount Kenya region is trying now to see who is our next king. Yes. And some rumors had it, maybe they are thinking of Kenneth, and then it was like, no, mm -hmm. it is not him. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think it's a surprise from mm -hmm. the Mount Kenya region. Mm -hmm. Now, going back to Western now, mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons given by the mm -hmm. uh, that uh, fraction of leaders, they yeah. were saying they, they have decided to support President Uhuru because they have dis they have seen mm -hmm. uh, the leadership in the House, that mm -hmm. is the parliament. Mm -hmm. They are not there. <laughs> they now they want to be in the in the in the government mm -hmm. for the remaining few days. Yes. Now, at this point, mm -hmm. do you think our 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 politics, mm -hmm. our leadership is mm -hmm. maturing, or mm -hmm. it's only throughout the interest of individuals? No, we've not yet matured. Mm -hmm. I, I think until a certain uh, group of individuals pass on. Mm -hmm that's when we'll have a new kind of Kenya. Because the pre-colonial, uh, post-colonial individuals are still hovering around. You cannot put uh, new wine in old wine skin. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is happening is uh, the, the Kayang generation, which I call it between the age of 18 to 35, because mm -hmm. these, these are the ones I believe will be the next leaders in the next dispensation. Uh, remember they are observing and they are seeing the ills and the mishaps that are, that are going around. Uh, where they would have done better. You know, sometimes if you go on, uh, on the government pages, you'll find people with amazing ideas because they feel this is what you should have done, this is what you should have done, this is what you should have done. But because of um, handles and uh, systems that have been set in place, uh, uh, they have hindered so much progression. But my belief is that I, I foresee in the future uh, this old caliber has to go. You cannot put new wine in old wine skin. It's it's not possible. It will, but it cannot even uh, mm -hmm. comprehend. But what is happening uh, within within the country? We are having young voices, young people rising up, young people thinking different, young people coming up and saying, no, 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 no. We can do this in a different way. And as we progress towards uh, 22, and I think maybe that's why uh, William Ruto is really trying to focus on the young people because th that is where the the next uh, level is going to be because remember the literacy level among us the young people is quite high unlike the the older population and now the the world is becoming like a global village it's becoming a a, 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 a global kind of quote unquote government because that's w what the world is going towards towards so uh, until the old gods mm -hmm. are all eliminated one by one because i know nature in itself will have to take its course mm -hmm then that's when we should we'll start seeing better reforms and better unity and better development why am i saying that remember it's still the same age of between eight, 18 to around 35. most of them maybe you are from a mixed marriage so you maybe babako ni mluya mamako ni kiku so we have a lot of intermarriages that have happened over a, long, uh, a period a uh, progressive period of time to the point itafika mahali you cannot stand and say wakiku tunafuata hivi then mwenye atasema na mimi mwenye ni mjaluo mkiku nitaenda wapi you know <laughs> all, all, that, that's what well, that is what well, that is what is uh, actually really happened because you see once education has set in people don't think about the cultural aspect and everything so mm. people have gone to school they have mingled with other communities so over time there is a new breed there is a new uh, uh, caliber of individuals that have cropped up over time and at 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 the height end of it, maybe they'll be in their 40s right now. They'll be now the ones now taking up leadership and everything. So the old guy that now are thinking tribal, oh, sisi wa kikuyu, sisi wa kalenjin, siju, sisi wa nini, nini, nini. Over time, it will now be over, uh, overridden because of, of, of that mm -hmm. in, in intermarriage and that um, mm -hmm. interprogression. But come 2022, the, mm -hmm. the same card is going to be still be played. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that is the card. Because why would people now be meeting in Embu, for example, for Uhuru succession? For what? Wha and there, wha wa there was no youth. <laughs> <laughs> and there was no youth. Apparently. Yeah, so wh wh why wouldn't uh, people sit down and say, this guy can lead, mm -hmm. irrespective. Uh, my, my name should never be, be, be betraying me in, 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 in this day, day age and era. Mm -hmm. 
but as we are now, we still have the old wine. Mm -hmm. And you cannot put old wine in new wine skin, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. But there's a new wine that is being brewed in, in this country, mm -hmm. but it cannot fit in the old wine skin. If you try to fit in, in the old wine skin, I tell you, you will not be able to be progressive. All right. Yeah. Now, we are out of time. And before we get those comments from our audience, mm -hmm. maybe you could uh, give us your final recommendations on what you think about the whole affair of our leaders, how they are behaving, mm -hmm. the meetings that have been happening, uh, like that one in Embu, where we, do, we have not seen the youth being involved. Does it mean we lack experience? Does it mm -hmm. mean we lack mm -hmm. what it takes? Mm -hmm. And if so, we lack it. Mm -hmm. Who is our mentor? How, mm -hmm. are we, mm -hmm. how are we to become leaders of tomorrow? Because mm -hmm. they have refused of today. All right. Uh, I would say that uh, we've not yet have uh, leaders who have the servant kind of mentality. We've not yet had such kind of leaders. We are all, um, our leaders have taught us selfishness, competitiveness. You know, there is not that, uh, like, uh, like, I can do good for the sake of hum humanity. Every Kenyan, even to that teacher who is teaching, they all think me, 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 me. That's the, that's the culture we have in this country. We must agree. That's the culture we have in this country. You will find even a doctor will choose his, himself over the welfare of even a patient because we have that me, me, me kind of mentality. Okay. And that has been, uh, been brewed in, uh, because that was not the African setting. The African setting was uh, for the benefit of the whole community. But we came in a culture whereby it's me, I, and myself. Mm -hmm. I don't care what the rest uh, will happen to them, but me, I, and myself, if I am okay, I am good to go. Because how... Can a whole governor be putting up an ICU bed in his own home? <laughs> and in, in the, the, the local hospital that is there, you've not been able to put ICU bed, really. That already shows you the level of selfishness that we have in, in, in our leadership. Mm -hmm. So I think we need people who are serv genuinely servant leadership. And as, as I had earlier on commented, is that we really need to ask ourselves what kind of fabric are our leaders made of? All right. What do they stand for? What are their values? And can we look back and say, for sure, in over the last 10 years, this kind of a leader stands for this uh, values? Because, for example, if we, if we brought uh, Uhuru, what is the value system of Uhuru? At least Kibaki, we knew he was an economist in the essence. He, it's by merit, by merit. If you can do the job, you can do the job, you know? No, so no, we, we have to we, go home now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so we need, we need to sit down and, 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 and look at our leaders. Who, who has the, that servanthood kind of thing? Who has that love for the people? Right. And can we observe that previously from the interaction with individuals? Because if somebody abuses their mother, then there is no way they are going to maintain a good wife. It's not possible. So that, that's the same concept. If, if, if looking backwards, this person has no value system, this person has no culture, this person, by his interaction, does not love the people, then that outright tells you what kind of a leader this person will outrightly be. All but right. the message I would send to our leaders is that if they want this whole COVID-19 thing uh, flattening of the curve and Kenyans overcoming it, it has to start from them. They have to show they, they have to show that they also are trying to to be able to ensure that they are also trying to contain this whole situation. But if they continue behaving the way it is, then don't expect the cases are going to reduce. And don't come on TV and start blaming Kenyans. Actually, we should start the blame from the leader. And Motai Kagwe should not come and start telling Kenyans, oh, CG, we, we, you, you guys are behaving nini. What were you doing in a meeting? In, in Embu, you yourself. <laughs> so we should try and stop um, this blame game, blame game. All right, uh, let's, let's yeah, end. Yeah. Yeah, we, we are out of time. Yeah. Uh, apparently, there's someone who's trying to mention, like you have seen now, yes. uh, Sugar and Dino and Asema, they mm -hmm. are taking advantage of this time to yeah. prepare for themselves for 2022 mm -hmm. elections. Mm -hmm. And Anto Vanto says they are making citizens to question Corona. Mm -hmm. uh, they see what they don't do mm -hmm. and the vice versa. Yeah. Thank you so much, bitches, for coming and uh, highlighting your 
um, all idea how you think of, of the current events of our politicians. Mm -hmm. uh, she has been my guest, uh, Beatrice Cairo, health economist and an analyst. My name is Dereva Hilary. I'll be seeing you again in the evening. Have yourself a very good day and good morning for them that I have woken up this time.